This is my favorite 200 watt solar panel. It's made by Bougie RV. I'll have a link down below. So that way you can find this if you're interested in it after watching this video. I'm not being paid to tell you about this in any way, shape or form. I am just reviewing this Bougie RV 200 watt panel that I like for three main reasons. The first reason for portable power, this thing's really lightweight. I can move this around. Even an older person who doesn't have a lot of strength can pick this up and set it up quite easily. Secondly, it has an open circuit voltage of 28.5 volts or a VOC of 28.5 volts. But the third reason is that they're bifacial, meaning it has solar cells on the back of it so any extra reflective light that can hit the back of the cells will help make extra power and as part of that you can see my hand through these lines here that means that because this is clear here in the middle extra light that is not hitting right here is going to go through the glass bounce off a reflective surface and hit on the back of these cells. A lot of bifacial solar panels don't have this section clear here, which doesn't make any sense. I like that Bougie RV makes that clear so you can get as much reflective light as possible. Now this all comes at a premium. You're gonna pay more than if you were just buying a 400 watt residential solar panel. So if price is your concern, this is not your solar panel. I'm doing a large off-grid solar installation for a customer. When it's all said and done, we'll have 17 off-grid systems that'll be installed. There's eight duplex and each one is getting their own solar setup, so that's 16. And then we have an off-grid trailer that actually has a huge water generator, so it pulls moisture from the air and makes water. So if you want to see those videos coming up soon, make sure you subscribe for that. My name is Ben. This is the Minuteman Solar YouTube channel. Right now, I'm just trying to run my work trailer where I have a Pecron 3600 LFP solar generator, and that's for running my Everfrost 2 DC fridge that I got from Anchor Solix as well as my Wave 3 portable air conditioner that I got from EcoFlow, charging all of my tools, running fans, all of those things. That's what I use my Pecron for. Now for just portable backup power or just emergency backup power, these are the panels that I suggest most often. But most of the time people will lay them against a fence or a trailer or a pile of wood or a table or whatever is around. And that's what causes problems is these get blown over in the wind. So I'm gonna put my panel stands on this real quick and I'm gonna show you just how much power they make in full sun. This is the packet when you order the panel stands. You can either order from poweredportablesolar.com, soon to be minutemansolar.com. You get your upper and lower brackets for the legs. You get your anchoring system with your stakes. And then these are the lower legs right here, which go on the bottom of the panel to get it up off the ground. As far as the tools that come in the kit, this is with every order. You get a 7 16 wrench for clamping the legs on. You have a leg clamp tightener in case you want the telescoping feature of the legs to be even tighter. And then as well as a 13 millimeter socket for driving the anchors into the ground. From beginning to end to set up the entire thing was exactly eight minutes. So very easy. And then these stay on here permanently. If I need to collapse them, it's very easy to do so. And then because these lower legs have this lower leg clamp, they don't move left and right. So if I need to stand it up, I can just grab the whole thing just like that and it's not going to be wobbly and this gives it a lot of rigidity. So in order to set it up for the workday, all I have to do, stand it upright, loosen this star, pull out the other leg. And what's nice about this is because this leg telescopes, I can extend it all the way out for winter months or I can have it much lower to the ground for summer months like right now. Now because these solar panels are so light and because these panel stands don't add a ton of weight, it's really easy to set them up anywhere. And you can actually see, this is one of the buildings that we're working on. Right now we got 40 solar panels up on the top of that. So because it's summer, the sun's gonna come pretty much directly over me, but if it were winter, I could tilt this all the way up since the sun would be much lower in the sky. And because this is so light, I can actually point this directly at the sun and I'm on an uneven terrain. I can lift up one side here and get this much more balanced if I needed to. And once you anchor down the whole system, then it's really windproof and it's not going anywhere. But the Bougie RV puts out a lot of power. I'm gonna use this anchoring strap to hold these two panels together. Gives it a little extra strength. The more panels you put up, the sturdier it is. Time to connect it up to the solar generator. So I've been keeping my Pecron here underneath my work table. I have my full charging battery bank for my Milwaukee tools right there. I'm gonna bring this forward just so we can see what's going on. Pretty much the only thing that I dislike on my 3600 LFP from Pecron is that there's no designated power button. You either have to turn on DC power or AC power. And then when you wanna turn the system off, you turn off both of these and it basically has a timeout. Once the timeout is reached, the whole system shuts off. You still can use this as a UPS though. If you wanted to have a wall charger plugged into this and leave this turned on, you could keep running loads and it'll stay turned on. I'm connecting these in series, which just means I take the negative or the female from one, 
plugged into the positive or the male of the other. And that's where if you're running like an Anker Solux F3800 or any charge controller that goes up to 60 volts, that's why I like these panels. So 60 volt charge controllers are very common amongst a plethora of solar generators. I don't like 60 volt charge controllers, but the Bougie RV 200 watt panels allow you to get maximum voltage because in the end, volts times amps equals watts. So when you see a solar generator that says it does 1000 watts or 1600 watts or whatever it is, but the charge controller is limited to 60 volts, it's impossible, I'm telling you, it's impossible to get that full wattage without getting close to the maximum voltage. You can't get to the maximum voltage if you're using normal solar panels, and that's why I like using these. There are two numbers you have to really be aware of. One is the VOC, and the other is the VMP. I'm gonna put the information up for these panels right here, but you'll see that the VOC at 28.5 volts, when I put two of these together in series, is gonna be 57 volts. You want that VOC to be really close to the maximum voltage of your solar charge controller. And that's how much voltage they make when they're not sending power to a solar generator. But the big deal is that voltage will drop down to the VMP rating or close to it once it's actually producing power. And since volts times amps equals watts, the higher my volts and the higher my amps, the more watts I get. It makes sense. So when I use a 400 watt solar panel, those make about 37 volts VOC. And that means I can't connect two of them together in series, just like I did here. And my volt is gonna be 74 volts. That's gonna exceed the 60 volts. That would burn up the charge controller. I'm not exaggerating when I say I searched for weeks, if not even months, trying to find a solar panel that had the right VOC. So that way it would work with 60 volt charge controllers. There are very few of them on the market. So just about to break 300 watts of solar input right now. It's still a little earlier in the morning. I generally get around 350 watts midday from these solar panels. So it's pretty common to still not get the full maximum power of the 200 watts from each panel. That's pretty normal with most solar panels, but I wish I was getting more because we had that bifacial gain. But anywhere from 75 to 80% is pretty typical for a solar panel. If you're getting 90% output, which I have gotten with these panels, that is a really good sign. Now underneath here, you can actually see the grid pattern of the light that's still being able to come through the solar cell. And even on my hand, you can see where it's a little bit shaded and then a little bit lighter, a little bit shaded, a little bit lighter. So if we had a light hard surface, such as an RV roof or concrete or anything like that, that's pretty reflective, it will help get a little extra power off the back. I'm not being paid to tell you that I like these panels. This is my own personal opinion. This is what I recommend. This is what I put on my own kits. It's what I use for myself. If you find that helpful, I'll have my links and discounts down below. You can use those links as well as find the stands at poweredportablesolar.com, soon to be minimansolar.com. These do come at a higher price than what you'd pay for a 400 watt solar panel, so it's definitely downside, but it's supply and demand. Now dimension wise, you're looking at 30 and a quarter wide and then top, you're looking at 51 and 5 eighths tall. So depending on how you'd fit this on an RV or a trailer or something like that, those are the dimensions. I think they're close to about 23 pounds. They're not hard to move around at all. So this is what I recommend for smaller solar generators or even a larger solar generator like the 3600, but where you just want it to be portable. It's not a windy day out. I'm not anchoring it down. If I needed to move these, I just pull off my anchoring strap, disconnect them, pick this up and just like that, I'm off. I just fold the legs down like this and now I'm ready to go off to my next campsite or my next work site or whatever it is. They're nice and portable and easy to put away. This is my favorite portable solar panel, especially with the stands like this. This is actually cheaper in most cases than buying a folding solar panel. Folding solar panels, folding solar panel, well, wow. Folding solar panels are easily breakable. They fold over in the wind. Sometimes they don't set up very easily. This is definitely the way to go.